Chapter 3 Rewards in Heaven for Service to God 3 colon 1 dash 8 carnal and worldly versus spiritual growth and maturity 3 colon 9 dash 23 rewards for being laborers together with God. What does it mean to be carnal? How do we have rewards in heaven? What is the gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, defile the temple, 317? 3 colon 1 and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. 2. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Paul could not tell the spiritual babes at Corinth all the deep things Christ had shown him by the Spirit in his word because many were not exclusively Pauline, 1437. He had to feed them with milk because up until now they were not able to handle solid food, and even now they were still not ready for deep spiritual truths. Three for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men? To walk as men means to walk as the lost, not as spiritual saints or sons of God. Paul could not speak to them as spiritual but as if they were still unsaved. They were envying each other and competing instead of working in unity. For for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? If the Corinthians are squabbling over which man to follow, are they not carnal after the flesh? They should esteem the doctrine of what Christ had done by the cross, not men. Some Corinthians claimed they were followers of Paul, while others said we follow Apollos, when they should be following what Paul taught about the risen Christ, Rom. 1625, 1 Cor. 11 colon 1. In this verse, Paul leaves out Cephas and Christ according to his earthly ministry, because only Paul and Apollos are preaching the mystery. Apollos was eloquent and knowledgeable in the scriptures and he had decided to go to Corinth after being caught up in the word of God about the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary and the understanding of Paul's distinctive apostleship by Aquila and Priscilla in Ephesus. He used the scriptures to save. Many Jews in Corinth in Acts 18 verses 18 to 28. They should follow the Christ that Paul preached, not men. The Lord Jesus Christ empowered one man, Paul, to tell us what Christ said to us. Following Apostle Paul's doctrine from Christ purifies the church. 5. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? The Lord empowered Apollos and me to be ministers by whom you believed. Each member of the body of Christ is to be an ambassador representing Christ in heaven on earth, sharing the message of his cross and the mystery, 2 Cor. 5 colon 18 dash 21. 6 I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Paul planted or founded the church in Corinth, and then Apollos, who was mighty in the scriptures, came and watered or helped them in their spiritual growth. No one becomes spiritually mature accidentally. Spiritual growth requires diligent, rightly dividing Bible study. 7. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. The person God uses is nothing because it is God's power, by his Spirit, that makes a person willing to believe God. The Spirit's role in using God's word so the unbeliever is willing to put his faith on Christ is not fully understood. Acts 16 verse 14, Colossians 2 verse 12. This is a miracle that only God understands how it works. It has to do with conforming our will to his, by faith. 8 Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Paul and Apollos are one, as ministers. The messenger is nothing, God wisdom in the cross is everything. Every person who labors in what God is doing, 1 Tim, 2 colon 4, will receive a reward according to what he has done. This reward is probably a job, his position in heaven. The judgment seat of Christ is a blessed, joyful event, for colon 5. 9 For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. 
We are working together with what God is doing, not competing as his messengers. As part of the body of Christ, the Corinthians are God's farm and God's building temple. Some people are ready to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the mystery because others have prepared the soil, planted seeds, watered, pulled weeds, cultivated, harvested. Each farmer receives wages and shares in the harvest. God is currently building the body of Christ in mystery, his holy temple, not the nation of Israel. Ten according to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth. Thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. God graciously gave Paul the position of master builder and the ministry of laying the foundation for the body of Christ, Rom. 11.13 Then another, Apollos, came along and built on what Paul had begun. Everyone one of us needs to follow the blueprint, instructions, Christ gave us through Paul in Romans to Philemon. 11 For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The cross allowed Christ to impute his righteousness, his spirit to two groups, one to live in heaven and the other on earth. Paul builds on Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, or Christ's ministry from heaven through Paul to us, Rom. 16.25 f. 3.1-9, we must take heed to build on the foundation Paul has laid on top of the foundation of Christ. The mystery is distinct from Christ's earthly ministry to Israel through Peter, Gal. 2.7-9, the preaching of the message of the cross has the power to save a soul and transform lives. After a person is saved they need to come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2.4. 12 Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, if any man builds on this foundation which is Paul's foundation on top of the foundation laid down by Jesus Christ. Paul laid down the foundation of the mystery and did not build on another man's, Peter's, foundation, Rom. 1520, gold, silver, and precious stone are the work done by his spirit to share the message of grace in his word that saves souls and edifies the body of Christ concerning the mystery. But it is also other service that pleases God, showing Christian love to others, f. 6 8, while wood, hay, and stubble will burn up, work done after the flesh, preaching Christ's doctrine to Peter under the law, or human wisdom. Men use wood, hay, and stubble to build their own homes, not God's. 13 Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. There will be rewards in heaven for faithful service built on the right foundation. At the judgment seat of Christ, the day, we will be evaluated for rewards for service done in this life on earth. Christ will try our work as by fire to see what quality, or sort, it is, if it is good or bad, to core. 510, the fire of his word and eyes will purify us by burning away any bad impurities. Is not my word like as a fire? Ja. 23.29, Christ has eyes like unto a flame of fire, Revelation 2 verse 18. Fire takes away and cleanses anything that is not pure. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer, PROV. 25 colon 4, any work that remains after being tested by fire will receive a reward. In a sense, our lives are like a race to see how much labor we can do with his spirit working in us while on earth. Knowing that his will is to have all men saved, soul winning, and to come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim, 2 colon 4, as ambassadors, we share the gospel with the lost and those who think they are saved but have not trusted in Christ's work alone but added to their salvation, Rom. For colon 5, we are also helping the weaker brother who mixes Peter and Paul, Israel's prophetic program with the mystery, to come to Pauline truth. Our truth transforms or forms Christ in us, Gal. For 19, we want as many as possible to be saved and join us in this knowledge before the rapture. God wants us to do our best to have something of value at the judgment seat of Christ, 1 Cor. 9 colon 24 dash 27, 2 Tim. 4 colon 7, 8 dot. 
14. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work of service done on Paul's foundation does not burn up, he will receive a reward. There may be a parallel with Israel's program, John 4 verses 34 to 38. Jesus told the parable of the servants receiving talents and being rewarded by being made ruler over many things, Matt. 25 14-30.15 If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. The person whose work is all burned up will suffer loss of reward, Colossians 3 verse 25, but he will still get into heaven. He will be ashamed if he did not rightly divide, 2 Tim. 2.15.16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Paul reminds the Corinthian church that they are members of one another as a group, a holy temple for God to live in both corporately and individually, one core. 619, 2 core. 616, in the body of Christ. 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? Paul warns enemies who would make the holy temple of God unholy. Wrong doctrine and wrong living defile the temple of God, and God will destroy that deliberate deceiver. 2 Cor. 11 15, Gal. 5 10. 18 Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. A fool is one who considers himself wise. Let no one fool himself into thinking he or another man is wise. No one is wise in this world compared with God. Let him recognize that he is a fool, so he may gain. The Wisdom of God Be teachable especially listen to some which may have some insight into God's word. 19 For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Paul quotes Job 5 verse 13. God takes men who think they are wise in their own craftiness, Rom. 1 colon 20-25. Human wisdom is foolishness to God. Satan thought he was wise and that no secret could be hid from him, Isaac. 28 colon 3. Satan entered Judas to make sure that God's people, the Jews, crucified their Messiah, Luke 22 verse 3, John 13 verse 27. But God caught Satan in his own craftiness and he will ransom Jacob from him, Ja. 31 colon 11, God had a secret, a plan to glorify his son in heaven and earth that he never mentioned until Paul, F. 1 colon 9 dash 12, Satan sealed his doom and has lost both realms. 20 and again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. God knows the thoughts of the wise of the world are empty, PSA. 94 colon 11. 21 therefore let no man glory in men. For all things are yours, 22 whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, 23 and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Let no one glory in men, because the cross was God's wisdom, and Christ did all the work of the cross, and his spirit is working in us. Paul said all things he lists are yours, he would not keep anything from the Corinthians that could benefit them. All the wisdom of God through men is ours whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas. We belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. Why does Paul mention Cephas, Peter? Some of his followers attended that assembly. God chose Peter to serve him on earth and Paul to serve him in heaven. Peter endorsed Paul in Acts 15 verses 6 to 11 and in 2 Peter 3 verses 15 and 16. If we believe the body of Christ began in Acts 2, we put ourselves under the law which activates our sinful flesh, Rom. 7 colon 9, and lose reward. The prophetic program is not in effect now, grace is. But, if we believe the doctrine which was delivered you, by Paul, Rom. 617, and serve God by his spirit in this world we earn rewards in heaven. We preach Christ. Crucified. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 23 Chapter 4 Stewards of the Mysteries Apostolic Example 4 colon 1 dash 21 Apostolic Function Example and Authority 4 colon 1 Let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. 
Paul and Apollos are mere stewards, the real power is of God. Paul graciously includes Apollos, a secondary apostle, because he is sent as a worker in the faith given to Paul. Paul knew that the Spirit could enlighten Apollos. The twelve apostles are not in the body of Christ but have a different destiny, Matt. 1928, Paul and Apollos were ministers of Christ's heavenly, not his earthly ministry. The mysteries revealed to Paul are in the appendix. Two moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. A steward is a manager of his master's wealth, for example Abraham's servant Eliezer and Joseph in Potiphar's house. Paul managed and relayed God's hidden wisdom in person and in his letters. The mysteries God revealed to him concern his heaven-bound people. 3. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment, yeah, I judge not mine own self. Some were judging Paul to be on the same level as Apollos when Paul is in fact the Christ-appointed apostle of the Gentiles, Rom. 11.13, Satan was trying to discredit Paul in the eyes of his followers. For for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Like the steward in Luke 12 verse 42, Paul wisely and faithfully handed out the revelation of the mysteries he received from Christ with them and us, Gal. 1 11, 12. Paul is not justified by the work he does for the Lord, Christ will justify him. What matters is what Christ does through the believer. We cannot be reluctant about taking a stand for the word of God rightly divided. We cannot be influenced by the fashion of this world because if we are, then our ministry is hampered. Paul's only concern was pleasing God, not men. God is his judge. Paul cares very little about the judgment of men and does not even dare to judge his own motives. Paul will be judged by his own master according to his faithfulness. We are not to compare ourselves with one another. We serve Christ. Christ is our power source. 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Judge nothing before the time some service is cumulative. When is the judgment seat of Christ? It is after the Lord comes. God will then make known the secrets of men's hearts, our motives and our service to him. God never counts sin against believers because he counted it against Jesus on the cross. Paul and Apollos are only messengers it is Christ who is everything. Since all the bad is burnt off, only good and praise from God remains. 6. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. If Paul and Apollos were examples and a blessing to the Corinthians, they should be grateful to God and not men. They are messengers, it is Christ who is everything. Paul does not offer the slightest criticism of Apollos, they were not competing and Paul is not envious of him. Learn in us not to think too highly of men, so none of you be puffed up championing one teacher against another. 7. For who mocketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory, as if thou hadst not received it? Who makes you different from another, and what do you have that you did not receive? If you received it, spiritual wisdom from the mind of Christ, why glory as if you did not receive the wisdom from God? 8. Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. Paul launches in with some holy sarcasm. The Corinthians seem as if they are casting Paul and Apollos aside in favor of each one of them becoming an instructor. They brag as if they reigned as full, rich kings, without them. Still, Paul says, I wish that you really reigned in a good way, and we reigned with you. 9. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. Paul shares the limelight with Apollos, including him as an apostle. Other secondary apostles are Barnabas, Silas, and Timothy, Acts 14 verse 14, 1 Thess. 2 colon 6, Paul says God seems to have put us apostles last, as if appointed to be martyrs. 
We are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and men, since the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ and the dispensation of the grace of God was not revealed in the Bible until Paul, curious angels are learning from Paul and the body of Christ, f. 310.10 We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ, we are weak, but ye are strong, ye are honorable, but we are despised. 11 Even unto this present hour we both hunger, and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, 12 And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, 13 Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. Paul and Apollos blessed them while they reviled, spoke against them. They were willing to be fools for Christ's sake. Paul said, Even now we endured hunger, thirst, lack clothes, are beaten and have no place of our own to live, yet we ask you anxiously to accept our message. Paul suffered many things to get the message out even while writing this letter. He and Apollos both worked to support themselves. Paul worked making tents. The world cannot understand this kind of sacrifice and calls that person a fool. Paul could have been a great rabbi, but he gave it up to be a minister of Christ, philosophy. 3 1 11 They thought Paul was a fool, but they were wise. They said Paul was weak in person, but thought they were strong. They were honorable, but Paul and Apollos were willing to be despised and treated as the scum of the earth and to bless others while being reviled by them. For example, when Paul told the Jews that circumcision does not matter he was not very popular with them and they beat him, Gal. 5.11 14 I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. The Corinthians treated Paul less than what he deserved. Paul said he did not write the letter to make them feel ashamed, but they should be for their disobedience, but to warn them because they were his beloved sons. He reminded them that he had begotten, won them to Christ, when he gave them the gospel and showed them from scripture who Jesus was and what he had done. After that Paul patiently nursed them along for more than 18 months. Paul was their spiritual father and church founder, even if they had 10,000 instructors. 15 For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. 16 Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. There were too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Everyone thought they were a leader or teachers. Paul implores them to follow him their spiritual father, 11 colon 1, philosophy. 317 Teachers need to have a solid understanding of Apostle Paul's letters, distinctive ministry, and right division. We need to point to the verses in the Bible. 17 For this cause, division, because they do not understand that they need to follow Paul, have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Even now, Paul was hoping that they would change their minds before he arrives and follow my ways Paul as the apostle chosen by Christ, not Paul as a man. They are to follow his ways he was their pattern, 1 Tim, 1 16. Notice how Paul says in Christ Paul constantly gives Christ the credit for anything good that he does. Paul sent Timothy, Acts 19 verse 22, to them because he fully understood Paul's distinctive ministry and apostolic authority. Paul sent this letter from Ephesus with him. In 2 Corinthians we find out that they did not respect Timothy so Paul had to dispatch Titus. Timothy was timid, but Titus spoke with confidence. Titus was finally able to give Paul a good report about how this letter had convicted them and changed their minds about Paul. They finally realized that Paul loved them enough to correct them and to point them back to the fact that he was their apostle and most were behind him all the way. 18 Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. 19 But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Paul had to be firm he mentions that phrase puffed up several times in this letter, for colon 6, 18, 19, 5 colon 2, referring to the Corinthians being inflated with pride and carried away with their spirit-given knowledge and spiritual gifts. The leaven or yeast of sinful pride had crept into the church and puffed them up, 
5,6. Therefore, Paul thought it necessary to warn them not to take credit for what the Lord had revealed to them and not to think that was equivalent to God-given apostolic authority from Christ. They needed to squash that sinful thought. Some did not think the real Christ-empowered apostle would come to them, but he did come to them, 2 Cor, 2 colon 1, 2 and 12, 14. 20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 21 What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? For the purpose of also. Establishing his kingdom in heaven, F. 1 colon 9, 10, God made Paul his spokesman and Christ was speaking through him, 2 Cor. 13 colon 3, 1 Tim. 6 colon 3. It must have grieved Paul to have to write this letter of reproof to the carnal Corinthians, but they needed to listen to him. Paul did it for their own good because he loved them. They needed to stop allowing fornication, being divided, and submit to the fact that Christ appointed him be the apostle and gave him the revelation for the body of Christ. Paul was hot under the collar. Did they want him to come with a rod of correction when he came in his apostolic authority? or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? Meekness is obeying what God said, looking for the church, the body of Christ, before the Apostle Paul? It's not there. It, W, was a mystery hid in God. What is Satan's current policy of evil? For Christendom to follow Peter instead of Paul, or to mix Peter and Paul, plus the printing of modern counterfeit Bibles. Although Satan is a defeated enemy, he is still doing his best to cause division among believers, foil God's plan, keep people lost, discredit Paul in their eyes, and conceal Paul's distinctive apostleship and ministry to the body of Christ. Chapter 5 Wrong Thinking Results in Wrong Living Immorality Rebuked 5,1-13 Judging a Member Living in Open Sin 5 colon 1 It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. It was common knowledge that there is fornication among you, there was fornication in the assembly. Division among the believers had led to wrong thinking that resulted in wrong actions and immoral behavior. Paul takes a flagrant example of this sin to correct the whole assembly and show how wrong it is that a man should have his father's wife. Paul was probably informed of the pervasive problem at Corinth and the assembly's toleration of it by those of Chloe's household. The three who brought the letter of church questions to Paul probably confirmed it, 1617. The woman involved, his mother or stepmother, was not a member of the church or Paul would have dealt with her as well. This sin was even a disgrace among the Gentiles. We expect the unsaved to sin, but even the world expects Christians to be different. To allow a church member to live in open sin hurts them, but this sin can spread through the church. Jacob's son Reuben, one of the heads of the tribes of Israel, was also guilty of incest, Leviticus. 18 colon 8, Gen 35 colon 22, 49 colon 3, 4. Paul's reply concerning the fornicator permeates the letter and continues in his next letter to them. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. 2 Cor. 7.12 He wrote for the sake of the assembly. Sexual relations are not to be between a man and a woman, but between a husband and his wife. The marriage bed is undefiled. Heb. 13.4 Fornication, pornia in Greek, is a type of idolatry. It is putting lust for physical contact outside of marriage above serving God in holiness and godly conduct. Neither this man nor the assembly should degrade itself by living in the sinful flesh and committing worldly fleshly lusts. God has given us free will, but along with volition comes personal responsibility for the consequences of the decisions we make in life. We are not saved to live. Like we did when we were lost, but as his ambassadors, we should be careful to represent our Lord Jesus Christ. Honorably, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 18 to 20. Paul said, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient, 6 12, 10 23, because we are not under the law, but under grace, Rom. 
6.14, Paul kept his own vessel in control, 9.27. Before we were saved, we were under the influence of the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, F. 2 colon 2. By faith in the shed blood of the Son of God, we are rescued from the power of darkness, translated into his kingdom, and sealed with the Holy Ghost. Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14 f. 1 13, 14. His doctrine changes our thinking so we can live right and serve him. Rom. 6 17. Our thinking determines our conduct, actions, behavior, and rewards. Paul is a wonderful example of the transforming power of the doctrine in a regenerated man, Titus 3 verse 5. He went from an exceedingly angry man who hauled away men and women to prison, to wanting to save the jailer who put his lashed body in stocks in the inner prison, Acts 8 colon 1, 16 colon 23 dash 31, 26 colon 9 dash 11. Godliness is profitable for all things in this life and in the next, 1 Tim. For colon eight dot two and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed action might be taken away from among you. Three for I verily as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed for in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. 5. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Paul reproves the church members for being puffed up because they thought they were so open-minded tolerating the fornicator. They were glorying when they should have mourned that this person may not be saved since he is committing such a gross immoral sin. Paul had already judged the situation. By my authority with the power of our Lord Jesus, tell him at your next gathering that he has to leave the assembly because his behavior is not acceptable, so his spirit, thinking, F. 423, may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. This man was making bad choices, momentary lust and pleasure, and did not value the blood of Christ or his grace to impute his righteousness to him. Notice how Paul does not say that the soul may be saved but the spirit, because this man's problem is wrong thinking, just like many. Of the Corinthians Deliver him to Satan means to cut him off from preaching and fellowship so he must live in the world among sinners. Let him go from the assembly for the destruction of him wanting to live after the flesh, so he wants to live in the new life, the spirit, Gal. 525, so his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. He is wasting his time on earth and sinning against his own body. 618, this is what Satan wants. He is the God of this world. 2 Cor. 4 colon 4, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8 verse 6, when believers are carnally minded, they live and act like the lost. Those after the flesh, sin nature, are functionally useless as laborers for God, 1 Tim, 5 colon 6. Put him on a giant timeout. Let him suffer the consequences of his decisions. Unbelievers are slaves to sin, but believers can choose, decide, to stop. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live, Rom. 8.13 just like intoxicating drink, PROV, 23-13-15, sensual sin and perversion will bite in the end. The purpose of such discipline is not to lose a member, but to bring him to change his mind from continuing to live in sin to live unto God. If he is a true child of God, he will be convicted by his conscience and not be able to continue to sin in the world. The key to overcoming sin is to allow grace to teach us. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Titus 2 verses 12 to 14 
The fornicator's sin was perverse even among the Gentiles and dishonoring to the Son of God who gave himself for him. 6. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Do you not realize that one member living in open sin can defile the entire church? Paul said purge out old leaven, they were puffed up with pride, so the assembly can be a new lump, since you are unleavened, sinless in God's eyes. Because Christ are sinless. Unleavened Passover is sacrificed for us in mystery. Therefore, let us celebrate what Christ has done, not with the old leaven of malice and wickedness, done after our flesh, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth of the cross, walking in the Spirit, Rom. 8 colon 1, 4. Leaven is a symbol of sin. Before the Passover, the Jews were to go through their homes and remove all leaven, Exodus 12 verses 14 to 20. The church needed to clean house and remove the leaven, the fornicator. The fornicator's walk after the flesh should be destroyed, so his spirit may be saved from the loss of reward at the judgment seat of Christ. The church is to purge out the offender so the fleshly behavior of the church may also be destroyed and the spirit, right thinking, of the church be preserved. The well-being of the entire assembly was in danger. 9 I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, 10 Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. Paul said he had written another letter to the Gentile churches in which he said they should not keep company with fornicators, but now he says he did not mean the fornicators of this world, because then they would need to go out of the world. Paul wrote, And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed, to Thess. 314, but now he clarifies that when he said any man he meant any man that is a believer. 11, but now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, ridiculer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. They are not to even eat with a person who calls themselves a brother and does any of the six sins listed. If the church tolerates the sin, they are condoning the sin. One bad apple can spoil the whole bunch. If he calls himself a believer, he may or may not be a believer, only God knows the heart. However, we find out in 2 Corinthians 2 verses 6 to 8 that this man was a true believer, he changes his mind and wanted to return to the assembly for spiritual edification, but that the leadership of the church was reluctant to let him back into the church. 12. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Paul asks why. Should he judge those who are without Christ? Do not you judge those who are within the body of Christ? It shocks some believers when they hear that believers are supposed to judge what other believers do. 13. But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. But God will judge the lost who are without Christ. Therefore, since this man calls himself a believer, Paul commands them to put away from among themselves that wicked person. Expel those who live in open sin and will not change their minds and decide to stop sinning and live unto God. Rom. 611 From the local church assembly. Church discipline must not be done hastily, but all parties involved must be permitted to state their case. Sometimes weaker brethren will accuse a strong King James Bible believers and right divider because they are ignorant of these facts. On other occasions, it is Satan who tries to bring division among the believers. 2 Cor. 2.11 There must be prayer and the word of God must be consulted. There must be sincere Christian love. Only God can judge the thoughts and intents of the heart, but we are to judge other believers' actions. Paul says in his letters that several types of believers should not be in the church. Members who commit flagrant immoral sin, 5 colon 9-11, those who cause division, Titus 3 verses 10 and 11, those who perpetuate false doctrine and error, Rom. 16 17, 1 Tim. 1 20, 
and those who refuse to work, two thes. 3 colon 6 dash 12, mature believers should lovingly seek to restore those who are overtaken in a fault, slip up, gal. 6 colon 1. The two ministries of Christ. Earthly Ministry of Christ Prophecy 1. Primary Scriptures for Gospels 2. Dispensation, Law, Matt 5, 17, 3 Christ is King, John 1, verse 49 4. Sent 12 to Israel, Matt 10, 5, 6, 15, 21, 28 5. Gospel of the Kingdom Proclaimed, Matt 423, 10,7. 6. Great Commission, Matt. 28, 16-20, Mark 16, verses 15 to 18. 7. Christ's second coming to earth, Matt. 24, 29-31, Acts 1, verses 9 to 11. Heavenly Ministry of Christ. Mystery. 1. Exclusive Scriptures Paul's Epistles. 2. Dispensation, Grace, F. 3, 1 9, 3. Christ is Head, F. 1, 22, 23. 4. Sent Paul to Gentiles, Rom. 11, 13. 5. Gospel of the Grace of God Proclaimed, Acts 20, verse 24. 6. Grace Commission, 2 Cor. 5, 18 20, F. 3, 9, 7. Christ's Secret Coming in Heaven Rapture. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 and 52, Ifes. 4 13 18.